to keep two clean sheets at a World Cup is is something phenomenal. And you know, to get out of a group like this with six points, I think I think no one believed in us apart from us and the people around us. So it's it's phenomenal. I think it's a historic achievement, but it's not something where you know we want to stop at. It's I think it's a stepping stone for for the future and. No, we want to we want to continue to build on this. Um, obviously, now that we know we're playing against Argentina, it's going to be a, a difficult game. Obviously, playing against probably the best football ever to to grace the game, and you know, apart from that, again, as I say, it's eleven against eleven. It's not there's not eleven Messi's. There's one, and obviously, we know their squad is full of full of stars, you know, even Dybala's on the bench and, and Martinez comes off the bench. So it, it's a squad that's that's immaculate. And, you know, I, I always loved Messi and I think he's the greatest to ever play the game. And I think it's not it's not an honor to, to play against him because he's just a human, as we all are. It's just a, it's an honor to be in the round of 16 of a World Cup. That's the honor in itself. Um, whether we played Argentina or we would have played against Poland, it still would have been an honor to represent Australia in the round of 16 of a World Cup. Yeah, I think it will. Um, obviously, this, one's, this one can't be classified as a friendly. Um, I think it will, obviously, you know, playing against France, who's probably, I think, not in just my eyes, in everyone's eyes, probably the, the favorites at the World Cup at the moment with the players they have. But I think Argentina, after their first loss, They've just turned up another level and just decided to, to I guess, play to the best of their abilities and then to come into every game with a determination to win. I think they're obviously driven by the motivation that it could be Messi's last World Cup and he wants to, to win the World Cup and end it on a high. Um, for us, it's to stop that. Unfortunately, I'm, I am a big fan of his, but you know, I'd love to win the World Cup probably more than, more than him to win the World Cup. But... Um, no, all jokes aside, I think we, we've learned a lot from the France game. And, you know, I think we showed them a bit, bit of respect in that first game. And I think uh, this game in two days' time will be uh, a completely different game. Um, we've obviously got time to prepare, which we will. But, again, it's two completely different styles of football. Um, France play one way, Argentina will play a different way. So I think it's just completely two different styles of football. And you can't really just take all that from one game and move into another game, but you can take some positives out of that and move into this game against Argentina. But France don't have that one guy that we all know who Argentina have. So he's capable of everything. Uh, in terms of me and my story, you know, I've made a post after the, the game we beat Tunisia and some people have taken that post one way or another and, you know, I. I said it there, it's not a political or, or a war statement or anything, you know, I, I'm not a fan of any war, I'm not a fan of anyone losing their home, losing anything they've ever had. Um, for me, it was just a more an emotional moment, being a child and thinking that, you know, you could basically come from nothing and, 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 and win a game in a World Cup and win two games in a World Cup and get to the round of 16. And for me, that's the most important is to pass on a message to, to the younger generations and to kids around the world who who maybe have nothing or who have little in their lives that, you know, dreams are for all of us. You know, God gave us all the imagination when we sleep to dream and you can dream of anything. You know, I can go to bed tonight and dream of winning a World Cup and who's to say that in 15 days, 17 days, whenever it is that that dream won't become an, uh, a real achievement, you know, and that's why I think God obviously has the best powers in the world and that's why he's given us an imagination and for me, I just want to say to the younger generation, just keep dreaming, keep believing, and anything's possible, really. Anything's possible with a bit of luck, a bit of determination, and just just head down and work hard, whether it's football, rugby, whether it's wanting to be a journalist, whether it's wanting to be a writer or an actor. I think that's the most important thing is just to believe. Am I saying why not us? I am, you know. Leicester City won the Premier League. I said this last night. Leicester City won the Premier League. Croatia got to the World Cup Finals last World Cup. There has to always be that one story that kind of shocks the whole world, that one story that everyone jumps on the bandwagon and goes, oh, we know our country's out, let's support these guys because they're the underdogs. And I think it would be a lovely story, you know, one day when we reflect on it and we couldn't even write a book about it that we ended up getting to a World Cup final and winning it. I think that would be 
the most beautiful story in the world, then hopefully then the, the MP would give the people a, a public holiday, I guess. I mean, it's a pleasure to be compared to them. They, obviously, they, that generation had players playing in the best leagues around the world. Um, this generation doesn't have that, but I think this generation has a group of brothers who are willing to dive one another. So that's the most important thing, and that's what gets you over the line. And, you know, I don't want to be compared to no one. Um, I'm a single person. Each, of, each one of us is where ourselves, you know, and this group can't be compared to no one. This group is special for itself, and I think this group is, results-wise, I think we've surpassed that generation where we've got two wins and two clean sheets, but again, I can't compare a Harry Kuehl and a Tim Cahill to anyone in our group because I think they're the gods of Australian football, but this group here in itself, this 26-man squad and all the other boys that were part of the qualifiers, we are gods in our own way, I guess. From day one, since his first training session we had in Turkey, he said he wants to be the coach of the greatest Socceroos team ever. And I think that in itself is massive. And I think Arnie's proven that he's one of the greatest coaches that Australia's ever had. And I think this generation's proven that, you know, it could be the greatest generation ever. Now, that's... Not for me to determine. It's more or less for you guys or for coaches or for whoever. But I think we've all bought into Arnie's saying and I think, you know, I'd love for us to get past Argentina and then I could come back here next, say, Sunday, Monday and be like, well, um, I guess we are the greatest generation the soccer has ever had. Thank you, guys.